Hi, friend. It's been a while. Almost a year, in fact. A lot has happened. There's been good things and bad things and challenging things and soul-crushing ones and also soul-filling. So many of you have reached out over social media, in person, through email and text to see how I am and where I've been. It's so weird because I simultaneously feel as if I haven't been anywhere and I also feel as if I've been everywhere and I'm in the exact same chair I was one year ago and yet I feel as if I'm in a vastly different place. So I thought I would record this episode, give you a life update if you care, if you want to listen, and fill you in as we get ready to kick off and fire up Golden Girls Podcast once again. In this episode, I'm sharing the last year and the crazy ups and downs from the massive health challenges I face and the journey to come out of it, my health ahas from sleep and gut healing and gluten, so many things. (laughs) You're going to hear about the most exciting opportunity in my career, a TV show I was signed up to be a part of and then had to cancel, and you'll hear why. You're also going to hear, man, if you're a people pleaser, this is, this is for you. You're going to hear about this next layer of people pleasing that I had to detach from, the comfort that I had to expand out of as COVID mandates and what I see as the great divide of our society took held. And as a people pleaser, you probably have felt this deep in your core. You're going to hear what I have, what I really think about COVID mandates and our response to the pandemic, which you've probably seen if you're following me on social media. I'm also going to share my newfound interest and dare I say passion for politics and involvement in that process. It's so weird. I never would have imagined myself saying any of these things. Um, And the deep things of what I've had to detach from and the great deep friendships and community I've now formed because of this detachment. I'm sharing why I didn't run Golden Girls Mastermind in 2022 for the first time in five years, which was a very scary thing to do because it's honestly where a vast majority of the revenue in my business comes from. And I'm sharing some of the new, deeper, I don't know if deeper is the right word, more nourishing self-care that I've fully embraced, including nervous system hygiene work, breath work, and a whole lot of ocean swims and cold plunges. As I sit here sharing this, I feel all the emotions. I feel nervous. I feel scared. I feel excited. I feel grateful. I really love this podcast. I love creating this. I've missed this. And I'm so humbled to each and one of you who listen, who have reached out and who's listening here. So thanks for being here. Thank you for caring. I hope you enjoyed this episode as I pull back the curtain on my life, my mind, my body, my soul, all the things behind the scenes here. Enjoy. Welcome to the Golden Girls Podcast, where we believe you can have it all. I'm your host, Lisa Michaud, and I'm spilling tangible tips, goal-getting strategies, and real-life stories to inspire you to tackle your biggest dreams. You're a woman who knows you're made for more. Get ready to leave the excuses and self-doubt behind by being vulnerable, sharing your truth, and having honest conversations so you can succeed on your terms. Together, we'll set goals you'll actually achieve by staying motivated, having fun, and building a community of women empowering women. It's time to tap into your best self, get confident, and truly have it all. Golden Girl, let's dive in. Okay, so what the heck has happened? Well, I feel like the kind of overarching theme of the last year has been health and health challenges and the journey to come out of that. I had an epic... I don't even know what to call it, like a breakdown, a collapse, burnout. I don't even know. But what I can say is that last summer, I got to the point where I could not even function. I noticed myself unable to process simple instructions. It would take me 30 minutes to an hour to do something really simple like send an e-transfer. I would find myself getting super distracted and getting pulled away. It just felt like I couldn't do anything. I also found myself having horrible allergies for the first time in my life. I would get woken up in the middle of the night. It would keep me up. And I didn't even know what it was. I had to like Google, (laughs) is this allergies? What are allergies? What are these symptoms? What is happening? And figure out what was going on. Like I really, it was just so new. And I, I didn't even realize how bad that I got. And this is, you know, this was a really big epiphany for me because I didn't even realize how bad it had gotten until I had this moment in September of 2021 Wrapping up my 100-day goal, which which is 
why I'm such an advocate of the process. And getting ready for the next one that I realized, holy moly, my brain power is so limited. I have no clarity. I have no capacity. I have no focus. My memory is so low. My creativity is virtually non-existent. And it really made me realize that so many of the things I've been doing in earlier 2021 was band-aiding this problem. And the real problem was that my brain capacity was not there, that I had this heavy brain fog, that I had these serious health issues, this inability to, to really function. And I was trying to kind of make all my goals work around this. And so it wasn't until I was literally on a Golden Girls community call. Uh, what we do in our community at the beginning, we, we do three 100-day goals a year. And we set the goal and then 100 days later we check in and we do a reflection and we celebrate and we we check in what worked and what didn't and what do we want to continue and what are we proud of and, and all those things. And it was on that call that I looked back and was like, oh my gosh, I, I can't function. <laughs> and everything that I'm doing is just trying to cover up for the fact that I am s- – sicker. I'm not functioning. I don't know what's happening. I don't know all the answers, but I can't, I can't continue. So that was a pretty big aha for me. And I'm going to throw in a shameless plug here because I really, truly believe in it. And I'm going to say I'm a believer in my 100-day goal process and the planner that I'm created to help facilitate this process. And of course, if you want to check that out, the link's in the show notes. But it doesn't matter, honestly, if you get my planner or not. What matters is that you set some sort of a time frame for your goals, at the very least to check in and reflect. I don't love the SMART goals framework. You know, I've talked about this a lot about how I think SMART goals suck. And one of the things I hate is this timeline as if like, oh, if I didn't achieve a goal in a certain timeline, I may as well just throw it out the window because that's not the case. But what I do really love and value about timelines is that it gives you a container and an opportunity to look back, reflect, and see what worked and what didn't. And without this, I feel as if it's really easy to Just do life on autopilot to just try and do the next thing and the next thing and do more and more and more without really understanding and being intentional with this life that you're given. If you're not reflecting, if you're not chunking down your goals into, I don't don't even care, 10 days, 100 days, 150 days, 99 days, doesn't really matter. But if you're not chunking it down, if you're not reflecting, it gets really hard to see these kinds of trends. And this just... This experience made me an even bigger believer in setting intentions and goals and even more so about being intentional about checking back in. So whether you create your own process for that, awesome. If you want to grab my planner that has this built in, it's got the starting point, it's got the reflection 100 days in, go ahead and grab that. Link is in the show notes, lisamichaud.com slash planner. But I just want to encourage you to have some sort of a practice where there's a start, there's a specific time where you end so that you can spot these kind of trends because without this, I feel like I might still be band-aiding and trying to figure this out. Um, And instead, I was able to totally rework my goal. And my goal became, I want to be energized again. I want mental energy, physical energy. I want to feel really good. And what I did is my last 100-day goal for the year was to do one thing a day to feel mentally energized and supported. And then also do one other thing a day that related either to my physical, emotional, or spiritual energy. And once I set that goal in place, that's really what I focused on and what I'm still focusing on. Since then, I put together an awesome team. I've needed a lot of support. I worked with a sleep doctor and a naturopath, a nutritionist, psychologist, acupuncturist, a chiro, and physical therapist just to bring this all together. And there was quite a few ahas and things that have come out of. Uh, one of the big ones is being diagnosed with sleep apnea and getting a CPAP machine. That has been really game-changing. And another big one is uh, getting gut support. So if you followed along on social media, you may have seen this already. I did a stool test, a DNA stool test. And that means that you, you know, poop in a cup basically. And I had to ship it across the border. So I had to fill out a waybill and an international invoice for my poop to send it to the US. It was pretty funny. But what is so cool is the information that came back from that showed me that I had a whole bunch of opportunistic bacteria, I had parasites, and a bunch of things that were off balance. So I did several intense protocols on gut healing uh, from September to December, from December to February, and then I did another test, another international way bill for my poop, and I also discovered I had gluten sensitivity. So there's been a lot going on. And through this, I wanted to share some ahas because I think it's not just about the nitty gritties of the the sleep test and the CPAP, but there's some real lessons that I want to pull out here and share with you because I know I'm not the only one. So here are some things that I learned and I want you to hear. 
Number one, trust yourself if something is off. I had a lot of reasons why I should be tired. COVID, solo parenting, business growth, massive expansion, and up levels. I thought maybe it was burnout, maybe I needed a vacation, which for the record, I still think I do. (laughs) But somewhere deeper down, I really persisted and knew that I just didn't feel like myself. In 2019, near the end of the year, I developed anxiety for the first time in my life. I faced low moods, things I'd never had before. And it, I think it's been such a slow and gradual decline that I, I doubted myself. I thought maybe I just need to be more organized. Maybe I just need to do better. And I doubted, I doubted that a lot. And now it's been about three years almost since I initially talked to my daughter and I started with blood work and started with iron pills and three sleep studies and, and here we are. And I'm just so grateful that I persisted and I just want to give that back to you too, that if you think that something might not be right, to trust yourself to listen to your intuition and to advocate because you might be wrong, but you also might be right. Now this next thing I want to share, number two, is something that is a bit weird coming from me and I think it's really, really important. It's don't let personal growth and these kinds of tips take away from what you're experiencing as real and pay attention to what you're saying to yourself because I was a downright bully to myself and sometimes I still am. I really doubted myself, I, and I still struggle some days. I was telling myself things like, I was lazy. I should just be able to focus. Some of the personal growth stuff and conventional wisdom came in. You know, can't I just set a timer? Maybe I should just put my phone away. Sometimes it is just that easy to increase focus. But sometimes it isn't. And sometimes things are actually off. And if you know anything about the gut, and if you don't, now you do, when your gut health is off, it severely impacts your brain. There's a huge connection there. And one day we'll probably do an episode on it. But I, I had done all the hacks. I did all the tools. I mean, I teach this stuff. I host um, co-working sessions, goal working sessions in my community. I'm really, really good at these things. I understand lots of the things we can do. But it wasn't enough. And the truth is, it's not always enough. And I will never say, you know, 100% guaranteed you come to this goal working session and you're going to be able to focus and do all these things. And these are tools that can help you, but sometimes you need something different. Sometimes tools and tips and tra- tricks, sometimes these hacks, they work. And sometimes what's going on is deeper than that. So don't shame yourself if the tips and tricks and suggestions from experts or from me or from yourself that they don't work. Trust that you know what's going on and keep trying. Keep staying curious. Keep exploring until you find out what does work for you and what is going on for you. Point number three here I want to pull out is that feeling crappy is not normal for most people. And I want to just say, I cannot speak to chronic health conditions. I realize that this is a reality for some people. And that's out of my scope and out of my out of my world, to be honest. I want to talk about the average, the normal. I think we normalize a lot of things as we get older. I believe as a culture, we expect that we're going to feel tired as parents. And we expect that we're going to feel crappy as we get older. I think that we normalize body pain and mental decline and I believe me, I could go on and on about this. <laughs> I think we normalize a lot of really crappy things in our society. And I think we accept it. But I refuse to accept that. I know, and I, I want you to hear this, that there are people that are living well and healthy and thriving into their 50s, their 80s, their 100s, and beyond. And I want to adopt that mindset. And I want to figure out what they're doing so that I can feel good. And so I think that's just a great lesson. And I'm really glad that I didn't accept that, oh, I'm just getting older. I'm just tired from parenting. I, I didn't accept that I was going to just feel crappy or <laughs> have brain fog or be tired. And my friend, I don't want you to accept anything as the way it is either. I want you to be royally committed to whatever vision it is that you have for your life. And even though things may have been normalized, or things might even be common, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the way that it is for you. Don't accept things just the way that they are, especially in our culture today. This also just reminded me that health is everything. Without my mental health, without my mental clarity and focus, I couldn't do anything and I didn't. I also think it's important to say that more people than you know are struggling with this. And that's a big part of putting together this podcast and specifically this episode. Since I started opening up With my experience, I've heard from so many other women sharing that they've also been struggling with some of the same cognitive issues, this brain fog. I have one friend that shared with me that she healed her gut a few years back and it made a massive difference. I have another friend who's also feeling tired all the time and going through her sleep tests right now. My naturopath has mentioned to me that many women around my age, like in their 30s, she said 30s and 40s, are coming to her and are being diagnosed with sleep apnea, which is new for her and her clientele. 
So I just want to say, like, let's let's stay connected. Let's stay open. And I think there's so much power to sharing, to asking for help, to sharing the things that we're struggling with, the things that we've maybe gone through and and thrived through and overcome. And there's so much power in coming together in community and sharing these things. So um, yeah, I just want to let you know that if you're going through this, you are definitely not alone. And I bet you if you also start to speak up and share some of these things, there's a and there's a fine line here between it being normalized, like, oh yes, everybody's tired because we're parents and just accepting that. But finding the people and knowing who the people you can talk to about it that are hold a higher vision for themselves and for you and aren't willing to settle. Okay, last thing I'm gonna say about the health thing is that <laughs> I practiced the one percent better thing and it was shockingly effective. At my, I'll say my lowest point, I was down to being able to do one or two tasks a day. And one of those tasks may have been send an email, send an e-transfer, reply to a message. That's it. And that was me going down to the very bottom and saying, okay, if I had to pull it all back and I only do one or two things, what are those things? Now, I'll also say this. I still had to parent. I still had to solo parent. So there's still like a lot of other things that just needed to happen in my life in this season of COVID and young young family and all that stuff. Um so I really pared back everything else. And it's like, can I just do 30 minutes of work? That's it. And then I told myself I could just slowly increase, just do 1% 1, 1 better. And it was like, okay, the first couple of weeks, it was, you know, one or two tasks. And then it was like, well, could I do a third thing? And can I just get a little bit better every day? And I will say it was, it was shockingly effective. And it's a strategy that I've heard in the past that I know has worked for other people. But it was something that I had never personally had the opportunity to explore. So – I guess in hindsight, I'm grateful to have this opportunity to try it and I can tell you that it works. So if you are feeling stuck in some way, try this 1% strategy. It, it, may be, it may work for you as well as it did for me. All right, another cool part of the journey. Last August, I was set to do a TV show. Now, I still can't share what it was due to an NDA, but it was a really exciting and oppor amazing opportunity. I was so pumped for it. We were all set to record. I had the event we were going to record set up, the clothes picked out, my nails were done, my eyelashes were ready, the scenes were set, the house was clean, then I got COVID. And my daughter and I were in a 14-day quarantine and we had to cancel filming full stop. That was it. Our, clue, or our crew, um, they flew out from the East Coast, they got the shots from our other cast members out here and I was not able to participate. And I'll be real, it was very disappointing. It's still disappointing because due to ongoing travel and COVID restrictions, we haven't been able to film. And um, I lost that opportunity to be in the premiere season, which was, is, was all the things. Very disheartening. And I just have to say, it's been such an exercise in trust. Trusting that it's going to be okay. Trusting that we're going to figure it out. Trusting that there's a bigger reason why I've missed out on this opportunity, that it is for the best. And as I reflect, as I you know, put together some of my notes for this episode, I, I think it really was for the best because I'm so much healthier now. I'm way more resilient. I give way less of a crap about what other people think. And I believe that that's going to make for a much more powerful show that we create. It's going to be more powerful for me personally, but more so for what I can share and how I can serve you, how I can serve my community, how I can serve our audience. So trust. And that's where I'm at. Um, and stay tuned as we do reschedule and I get more details. I cannot wait to share with you. And I'll absolutely be sharing when season one goes live because trust me, it is an incredible cast. And whether or not I'm a part of the season, the show is amazing. The cast and crew is phenomenal. It is going to be life-changing. Um, and I can't wait to share it with you. And hopefully one day we'll be able to film and I'll be a part of that to share with you as well. Okay, let's go deep now. This is scary to share, but you know what? Just gonna rip the band-aid off. <laughs> Let's talk about COVID restrictions, mandates, and all the things. First of all, I want to say that I know that this is a deeply divisive topic. And at the same time, keeping my thoughts and my heartache around all this, I I think was killing me from the inside out. I as much as I talk about getting a CPAP machine, healing my gut, doing all these things for myself, taking the work down, I truly think that holding on to my thoughts. My feelings, my perspective around this, not using my voice, I think it literally was making me sick. And so in honor of myself, in honor of how important I believe this is to share, I'm going to do the scary thing and share it. So maybe you're going to listen to what I have to say and decide that I'm no longer for you and that is your choice. 
Or perhaps you're going to listen and you might disagree and decide that it's okay to disagree. And if that's you, then thank you so much for your openness and for sticking around. I really appreciate that. And maybe you're going to listen to this and listen to what I share and you might shake and get angry and feel seen because you too have felt invisible as I did at many points. And maybe you too are holding on to things and it's making you sick as it did for me. So I'm sharing and diving into this very divisive topic for a couple reasons. Number one, let me just say this. I believe I can do this in a way that is heartfelt and authentic and I believe that I'm doing this with kindness um, and that's all that I can say. I'm doing it with best my best intentions and that's all I can show up with and that's all any of us can expect and, and that's how we can you can show up the same way too. So I'm sharing this because this deeply aligns with my values. I also know that so many of you do feel the same way and have experienced some of the same things and, and are craving to feel seen and don't have the community and, and feel alone so I want to share this. I know a lot of you might disagree, but I know that um, I know that a lot of you are going to listen to this with an open mind and open heart, and you're going to know that my intentions are in alignment with my values. And you may not necessarily agree with everything they say, but you may align with my values, and that might be a potential connection point for us and a way for us to continue to move forward. And honestly, like I'm ready to do hard things because even if it's uncomfortable, if it aligns my values. That is what's important. And I, if I'm going to be a coach here, if I'm going to be a leader in this space, then I have to go first. I have to be a leader. So here we go. I feel the need to say this, that I am not somebody who's typically anti-vaccine. And for many reasons, I decided last fall at the time to not get the COVID vaccine. One of the main reasons I decided to do this was on advice from my doctor, As I mentioned, I had COVID last August and in September I went to see my doctor. He let me know that I would be at a higher risk of adverse effects at that point if I had the vaccine because I had just had COVID. And he also said that I have natural immunity, so he said I didn't need the vaccine at this point. We also decided that because I was navigating so much health stuff, these unknown allergies, this exhaustion, this immense brain fog, barely functioning, the gut and digestive issues, that throwing something else into the mix wasn't the right next step. I want to just like right here to say, isn't it so insane that I personally, and maybe this is a me thing, but I think it's a cultural thing right now, that I feel the need to justify to everyone my personal medical choices and share what should be pretty personal conversations with my doctor with the world. And it's also frankly so scary to share. I don't want to get my doctor to get in trouble. I don't want him to... And there are cases of doctors who have gone against the narrative and have been reprimanded or have lost their licenses. So I don't want to get anyone in trouble. And I also don't want to open myself up to a bunch of people messaging me, calling me selfish or racist or grandma killer or anti-vaxxer or whatever that thing is. It's, It's scary. But it's precisely for those reasons that I want to highlight what I find to be the absurdity of all of this of having to share and justify deeply personal medical conversations and choices. And that by doing so and having, I believe, responsible, logical, thoughtful conversations and intention around this and knowing that I've done the right thing for myself, just the wildness that I'm opening myself up to very personal, very cruel and illogical attacks. But I'm here for it. Because this journey for myself and for anyone else who's remained vaccine-free or for anyone who is coerced into this or anyone who believes that it's a personal choice and is confused about what the heck is going on in the world and why, what's happening, I want to talk about it. There was definitely a lot of low points because at the end of August uh, 2021 in Canada and BC in particular, there was a lot of strict vaccine mandates for events, for restaurants, for gyms. And our federal government announced travel restrictions so that those who were vaccine-free, even with natural immunity or even with negative COVID tests, could not travel within Canada on a plane or a train. And I'm going to tell you, after those things happened, after those mandates came out, I fell into another further pit of despair. I know, I didn't think I could go any further, but I found it. And I know I'm not alone in it. There was so much that I had to detach from. Recently, I looked at my website and my little mini bio says this. It says, who am I? Well, I'm Lisa and I'm a travel lover, a foodie, a lover of activity and sweat, a lover of love and a goal-oriented, happiness-obsessed adventurist. Well, shit. According to that definition, 
I'm not any of those things. I was not any of those things. I could not travel. I could not be a foodie who goes to a restaurant. I could not be a lover of activity because I couldn't go to gyms. I can't speak about goals and events and I can't go on adventures. And that's really hard. (laughs) And that's also a big part of the work is to detach from labels and identifiers. And in order to not just survive, but to climb out of that pit of despair and to come out thriving, I had to strip all those layers back. And I had to go freaking deep and ask myself, who am I if I'm not a foodie? Who am I if I don't travel? Who am I if I don't go to events? Who am I if I can't go to the gym and don't have these classes and don't have all these things to keep me busy? Who the heck am I? This fractured a lot of me in my whole life and my my community, everything. And it led me to question and discover a lot of things. It made me ask, who are my friends who will support me? Who are the friends who only want to hang out with me at the hottest restaurants? And who are the friends who will still eat with me at home? It reminded me of that Oprah quote. Uh, Oprah says some, something along the lines of, like, find the friends who will ride the bus with you because everyone will want to ride in the limo, but only certain people will ride the bus. So it felt like there was a lot of those moments in the last, in the last year. And then there's also deeper layers, you know, who are the friends, who are the people who will hear me out and will ask me real genuine questions about my decisions? Who are the friends who will agree with me? Who are the friends who are in my life who may make different choices or disagree or see things differently and will still hold space for me and my love and my life and my opinions? For anyone who has been through this, you know it's super uncomfortable. It is painful. It is horrible. This is the gut-wrenching the heart-wrenching, cry your eyes out on the bathroom floor shit. This is the side of growth, the shadow work. It's the messy stuff. And I just want to say I'm sorry if if this was your experience. And I also hope that if this was your experience, if this is still your experience, if, if you've ever had any kinds of having to ask these kinds of questions, that you're able to start to heal and peel back some of these layers for yourself. And for myself, I really found... As, you know, the last two years have gone on, as restrictions pursued, and at times things got worse, I really had to answer the question differently of who am I? How do I create and find joy in my life? What makes me laugh? What makes me truly happy? Where do I find and create adventure beyond the things that I thought had defined me? Who are my ride or die friends? And who are those people who truly support me? Who are the people that are willing to be uncomfortable? Who are the people that are willing to maybe be challenged even on their idea of associating with me or being friends with me and being okay with that, realizing that we don't have to agree on everything for us to still be friends. Oh, that was such a profound uh aha. And as ugly as this process had been, as uncomfortable and as many tears as I've had, finding these answers has been one of the best gifts I could ever ask for. It is so true that sometimes the hard times, the hard, it's the hard ass work that really helps us discover and create who we are. And I've cultivated and created some really deep, incredible friendships and communities and connections that didn't exist before. And that's been magic. One day, I think I'll do an, we'll do an episode on this. Maybe bring in a psychologist or a therapist on this because I know I'm not alone. I also know there's long-term trauma, PTSD, and hurt that persists because of what so many of us went through. Um, and if that's you, I, I see you. I care about you. I'm so sorry this is what you've been through. And I want you to know that you didn't deserve this. Nobody, nobody deserves this. And if you are not, if this is your first time hearing about some of the challenges, I invite you to open up your circle and and talk to people because there's a lot of pain, a lot of hurt out there, um, and a lot of healing to be done. All right. More on that another time. (laughs) Let's talk about people pleasing. (sighs) This is a lot, all a lot to talk about because as you know, there's been a lot of cancellation and censorship on dissent of dissent on both an individual level, an organizational level, basically anything that doesn't go along with the mainstream narrative. Truthfully, over the last, over two years, there's been many things that I've seen and been really concerned about. The way that we've treated people, certain decisions we've made, the long-term impacts of policies that we've implemented that we haven't really evaluated and looked at and we've kind of just ignored. There's been a lot of things that my heart, my mind has not been able to wrap my head around. I think we've done a lot of illogical things and I I think most people would agree that there's been some serious flaws to the way that our government, most governments and leadership has handled the pandemic. And we've done things that have crushed my heart, not just because of the personal impact to me. I came out tougher. I recognize I have a lot of privilege in this too. 
What's really heartbreaking to me is that I've seen the ripple effect of this, how it's torn apart families and friendships and communities. It's been big. And I have to say, as a recovering, not recovered, but recovering people pleaser, my desire to not rock the boat and to stay silent and just get along to go along to get along runs really deep. Um, but I had to I had to move through this. And as I as there were more and more things that I just started to disagree with, there were some people that I felt really safe expressing my feelings to. In October, I had the opportunity to take a course, a workshop with Africa Brooke about self-censorship. And if you are not following her yet, get on it. She is incredible. I needed to take her workshop because I noticed myself just censoring in so many places and being so afraid of cancellation and of, um, of, yeah, cancellation of people hating me, of not making people happy, of having people, of disappointing people, all these things. And one of the things I learned in Africa's workshop was to start with one-on-one in-person interactions before you go to social. And that's what I did. And maybe that's what you need to hear too. So I spent a few months getting really comfortable sharing unpopular opinions. I did it one-on-one. I did it with people that I trusted and loved. I did it when I was grounded in a good space. I read a lot of comment sections that terrified me to say anything and also got me really, really comfortable with understanding other perspectives and where there was real alignment and being comfortable seeing other opinions and still feeling good for myself. Then it was about December 2021 when I realized that keeping all this in on a larger scale was killing me. And that's not an exaggeration. I felt myself dying inside. I felt myself just getting older and sicker the more and more that went on. I was silent about how unjust I thought the mandates were, not just for myself, um, but for the many, many people who have vaccine injuries or disabilities that prevented them from being vaccinated and the fact that there were no exemptions. I was silent about the things that I saw our government doing that I felt were really wrong and issues that were out there that media was simply ignoring. And while it is a nuanced topic, I truly believe in bodily autonomy. I believe that we should all have the choice and freedom to choose what we do with our bodies. And that stands for vaccines and abortions and whatever other topics there are. And this is kind of a gray area. I really believe that when people are given the right support, the right tools, when they're given accurate and honest information, information when they have personal trust um, with the people that, that are there to support them and they have they feel resourced, that they will always make the best decisions for themselves. And I believe more often than not, when people make the right decisions for themselves in alignment, it also ends up cascading out into better decisions for society. Anyways, long story short, I held all of this in. I held in the fact that I believed, and I still believed, that we were continuing to create a lot of harm in our society. I noticed that there was no criticism or discussion or dissent allowed, and frankly, that still terrifies me and something I believe we need to work on. I think the pendulum has swung real far one way, and we need to bring it back into balance. And in December, I hit this point where it was more uncomfortable to hold this in. It was slowly killing me inside. That was more uncomfortable than it was to face the discomfort of speaking up. So I blew it up. I blew apart my social media. I I shared what I really thought and I ripped off that other next layer of the onion of my people pleasing and I got really, really comfortable with discomfort in order to align myself with my values and my authentic heart and voice. And I think this is one more sage in doing this in a podcast and allowing it to be out there in perpetuity forever and ever. If you've been following along on Instagram, maybe you've seen it. I'm going to be honest, some parts have been brutal. I've lost quote, friends. I have had people insinuate that I'm racist. I noticed some people who used to follow me no longer do, and that certainly hurts the ego. But it has been totally worth it to be in alignment with my personal values. And I do believe I'm doing it with kindness and authenticity and honesty and calmness and rationality and and openness to all the nuance. Because of that, the vast majority of people that have reached out have actually thanked me for speaking up. (laughs) I was very worried about the impact of my business. And in particular, there were some clients that I adore and then other people that I have on my vision board as potential dream clients. And I was so worried that I was going to lose that. And the truth is that every single dream client that I have has reached out to me to thank me personally and to join in the conversation. There are so many of us who are not okay with what has happened over the last two and a bit years and we feel it. We feel it in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. There's so many people who see it and know it and it is so scary to speak up and I feel you. I don't see myself as just a coach. This isn't just a business for me. 
This is a mission. This is a sole purpose. I believe I'm a leader. I believe we are all leaders. And I really needed to step into leadership in this arena. And so this is it. Whether you agree with me or disagree, I truly hope that hearing my experience, my perspective, will at least inspire you to lean into discomfort in whatever arena of life you're in and for you to speak up for what you believe in. One of the biggest gifts that I never could have anticipated was the connections with people, the real, the raw stories. No matter what your perspective, what your ideas on on this topic or any others, there are people out there that are going to align with you no matter what you believe or say or do. And that is the truth for better or for worse. For me, it's been for the better. It wasn't until I put my hand up and waved the flag that said, I'm not okay with what we're doing. (laughs) I'm not okay with how we're treating people. I'm here for kindness, for openness, for compassion, for science that includes healthy debate and iteration. It wasn't until I put my hand up and said, I love you no matter what you choose for your body and I will fight for your right to bodily autonomy, for informed consent, and for real health beyond beyond a pharmaceutical. Until I said that, I did not know who the people were that needed to hear this and needed to be supported. I felt super alone. But as soon as I raised my hand and raised my voice, I was surrounded by so many other people. And if this is you, you know, DM me on social media if this is the first you're hearing or shoot me an email. And what I want to, why I'm hammering this home so deep is because your voice has this power too. Your voice has the power to connect you, to inspire others, to uplift, to support, and ultimately to change your life and the world for a better place. Your voice also has the power to free you. It has the power to heal you. If you feel or felt like I did, felt trapped, almost strangled or suffocated by the need to stay quiet, your voice is going to give you air and help breathe life back into you. There's so much more I could say about this on every level, but I just, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that. What I really want you to hear is that you're not alone and that it's not easy living and speaking your values, but it is going to set you free as hell and feel so dang good, even if it feels uncomfortable at first, because you and your voice are so powerful. All of this leads me <laughs> to my newfound interest and dare I say passion in politics and involvement in the process of politics. If you just shuddered or thought, oh, politics, here we go, that would have been me. I definitely grew up believing and living the old adage, don't talk about religion or politics. But I realized that many of the things our politicians were doing, some good and some bad, were happening a lot of the time, especially the bad, because of a lack of public accountability. I've never really known how to define myself politically because there's some values on, I'm going to say, quote, both sides that I resonated with and policies and in particular behaviors that I hated about, quote, both sides. And what I've learned is that both left and right, left versus right, is in my opinion a construct and it's like two wings of the same bird. And I feel like for anybody who resonates with some policies on both sides, some beliefs on both sides, you're not alone. I read a quote recently that said something like, if your conservative friends think you're left-wing and a liberal, and your liberal friends think you're a right-wing conservative, you've broken the mold. Congratulations. And I wish I could remember where I found this and who said this, um, but I just thought, dang, that's me, and I think we need more of this. And I, for me, this is more of the shedding, more of the layers coming off, but I think this is a journey. I think this is part of our collective evolution and collective consciousness shifting, which I really believe in humanity, we're at a crossroads of either like keep doing what we're doing and and potentially self-destruct or get ready together to have hard conversations, to shed these layers, to find things that actually work, to not just worry about ticking boxes and virtue signaling and how things look, but worry about real change in both our lives and society. Oh, that was a rant. Okay. But, and also I think a part of it is for us to stop identifying with only one end of the political ideology or one end of the spectrum and to stop identifying and attaching ourselves to all these labels. I, what I realized is that I was relying on the label of being either liberal or conservative to make me look compassionate in the eyes of some people or to look intelligent in the eyes of others. I'm going to say that again. I relied on an identity, maybe, I think someone else will resonate with this too, to make me look compassionate in some people's eyes. And I relied on political identity and to appear intelligent in other people's eyes. 
And I think so often we do this. We rely on labels to validate us and to make us look a certain way. And what I've learned and what I want you to hear is that I've had to learn to rely on myself to self-validate, to know who I am and know what I'm standing for and what know what I believe in and know for myself that either I'm compassionate or not and I've listened to other perspectives or I haven't or I care about other people or I don't um, and that I'm intelligent or not, that I've listened to other perspectives, that I have done some research on my own, that I have an understanding of this topic. And the validation has to come from something way deeper than just virtue signaling in the hopes of external validation. This is something that I'm still exploring, so stay tuned. One of the things I did do was decide to get involved in the political process. And someone that has helped me do this is Sarah Swain from Trailblazer. She just updated her name. Trailblazer Media. I'll put a link in the in the show notes. And she's definitely been a pillar of leadership for me to look into. Through her and her parliament group, I have learned about how our political system here in Canada actually works from the House of Commons to the Senate. I've read bills. I've learned how they get passed. Also all for better and for worse. I've spent the last six, seven months really getting involved in emailing and calling and I've gotten to have some amazing meetings and conversations with local and provincial governments and leaders. For myself personally, and I know so many people are so disenfranchised with the political system and I don't blame you for it, but I've really had to make the conscious decision and I'm still in it that I will no longer be a passive member of our democracy. And I believe that a real democracy is created when we all take responsibility and ownership of it. And so what we're seeing in our government, the criticisms we have of it, either side, quote side, I'm just going to say the things that we just think are, we see that are not working or are failing us as a community, we have to take responsibility for that as our own apathy or our lack of knowledge or understanding, where are we not showing up for it? So here I am learning a lot having a lot of fascinating conversations with a lot of brilliant people, learning new ideas, new perspectives, and hopefully some solutions to improve our communities locally and federally and globally. Now, if you want to learn more, check out Sarah Swain. I'll link her in the show notes. I will say that Sarah comes from a conservative background. I also would say she does this with a lot of balance, with kindness, with nuance. And if you're someone who has always judged conservatives, uh, it's okay. We've been taught to judge the other side and to, um, yeah, to have these stereotypes about what the other, quote, I even just like the other side, the whole, I don't even want to call it that. But anyways, if you've always judged, quote, the other side, I invite you to check her out with an open mind. And I believe that you will see her grounded explanations, her logical, rational, rational thinking, her kindness, and a great sense of humor is really brilliant and may open up to different eyes. Also, we will never heal or truly improve as a society or continue to learn or get better if we can't learn and listen to and respect people with other opinions. So if you, like many of us so humbly do, myself included, if you need a little more practice, uh, Sarah is a great person to open yourself up to. I'm going to leave this topic on a quote from Africa Brooke. And she says, There are many bad ideas out there and there are many good ideas out there, but how can we sort through them if we keep encouraging self-censorship, mindless regurgitation, and unquestioned parroting of only the ideas that have been deemed acceptable? Who gets to decide which ideas are worthy of hearing and which are not? I mean, so brilliant. Stay tuned for more on this topic and the evolution of this podcast in this direction and this, this whole idea of... Bringing up different opinions, different, bringing up different different ideas and concepts and having the conversations so that we can can get better. So, And hopefully one day we'll have Africa on the podcast. If you're listening, Africa, let's make it happen. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about business and some changes. Last couple things I want to share. Some of you reached out about Golden Girls Mastermind, which typically runs in January to June of every year because we didn't run it this year. We didn't run it for the first time in five years. And it's a scary thing because it's where the vast majority of our revenue comes from. So let me tell you that story. My daughter, Sonoma, she's now she's four. But between August and December of last year, she was home with me for 12 weeks. That was three months out of five. Part of it was some predictable stuff. We had to switch daycares again. So there was a gap. There was some transition period, all that. But a part of it was our two-week isolation of COVID in August, and the majority it was of it was a back-to-back barrage of colds, coming from cold season and a new daycare and this annoying lingering cough that would disappear and reappear at a whiplash pace and with zero predictability and just a phone call to mom to pick her up from daycare. 
So in December, I had a finish your year strong challenge that I was running for Golden Girls community and Sonoma got sick again and I missed the deadline and I had to push that finish your year strong challenge back a week. And this was about the same time we were getting ready to relaunch the mastermind and open my calendar for discovery calls and open up for an incredible new cohort. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it with integrity. I could not take on more clients and take their money when I wasn't already delivering for the people that had already paid me. And I obviously this was a tough decision. I feel like I'm generally really resourceful. I explored the, could we hire someone? Could we ask family for help? Can I push myself more? I tried to do all the things. And the answer was just a no. It was this quiet voice inside me that said no. And I decided not to run the mastermind, to take six months and restabilize my life, my health, childcare, the business processes, reestablish integrity with my clients and with myself, uh, everything that is really, really, truly critical. And even getting this podcast back up and running. I mean, it's taking me until July. It is now July that I'm recording this. Here we are. We're making it happen. So it was a definitely a big hit income-wise. It was a tough pill to swallow because I love my mastermind. I love the work that we do in there. I want to serve people. This is, it's, it's who I am. Um, but integrity is important and the long-term vision is is critical. And uh, so is my sanity. So that's why we didn't run the mastermind in 2022. I do have high hopes for kicking it off in December 2022 this year um, for an amazing 2023 cohort. So if that's something that you're interested in, hop on the wait list at leasemeshow.com slash mastermind and we'll make sure that, that you're in there. Okay, last thing I want to talk about, last update I want to say is talking about some of the new self-care practices that I fully embraced including some nervous system work, breath work, and a whole lot of ocean swims and cold plunges. All of this that I just shared, the health, the business, the childcare, the releasing of the people-pleasing, the political landscape, the cultural landscape, losing my entire, quote, identity and having to reestablish myself, it's been very, very intense. Oh, we also expanded our real estate business. We're up to like 64 doors now. So it's it's been a, a lot. This divisive world, online and offline, it's just also figuring out how to align myself, my inner values, my outer words, and my outer actions. This has meant that self-care has had to be very high priority and it's have to had to be very intentional and nourishing. This has not been, oh, let's go for a mani-pedi or a spa day or dinner with friends kind of self-care. Not to mention that it was almost impossible to get away for these kinds of things as a solo parent. Um, and also, I just no shade if for you having getting a mani-pedi is really nourishing amazing. It's just not for me. And I had to figure out how do I really ground down and support myself on a deeper level. So to do this, in November, I was introduced to breath work. I did a little bit at home and then I had the opportunity to do a breath work session with a practitioner. And ever since then, I've included it in my weekly practices. I personally just love the Wim Hof uh, basic um, breath work. So I'm going to add a link for you. Sorry, I'm like taking notes here and trying to do this. I'm like, breath work, Wim Hof, resources. Okay, got the note there. Um, if you're interested in getting started, check that out. Also, in a few episodes, uh, we I have an amazing healthcare practitioner, a certified breath work worker, Aditya J. Kumar, who is coming on the workshop or coming on the podcast to share some of his breath work. So stay tuned for that too. Those are gonna be amazing episodes. And if you're curious about that, there's gonna be more there for you. Um, In February, I was also introduced to Lindsay Lockett and I took her Nervous System 101 workshop and from there, my mind was blown and I signed up for her Nervous System Hygiene course. It has been a game changer. I highly recommend giving her a follow and I'll, I'll link to her in the show notes too. She is incredible. And what I learned is that my nervous system and in fact, probably most of ours are completely dysregulated after the last two years. I followed a lot of Lindsay's suggestions and powerfully incorporated them into my routine. Lots of things from shaking to embodiment, foam rolling, uh, meditative walking, and more. And I definitely I could work to be a little bit more consistent, but I will tell you this, that when I do the nervous system work, it pays massive dividends. So I highly recommend checking out Lindsay's work 
Lindsay, if you are listening, let's also do a podcast episode because it would be incredible. Um, And if this is something you're curious about, do a little research on the nervous system because a lot of our health conditions um, can actually be based on the nervous system. And a lot of the the mental health things that I know I struggled with were actually as a result of my nervous system being dysregulated. So really beautiful, powerful things. Uh, Check it out. On the nervous system thing and, and you know, just in general, some of you may know I'm a cold shower enthusiast. I have been for years. This year, I took it up to the next level. In November, side note, not the best time of year to start, but we did it. Uh, a friend and I decided to go to the ocean every second Saturday, so we've been doing that. Uh, he moved away, but I decided uh, to just open it up to anybody. So if you are in Vancouver and you want to join in, let me know because now, twice a month, in January, February, every single month, even when it's windy, rainy, or really cold, I get out there, I go to the ocean and get in there. Um, sometimes I'm alone. Most of the time people join in. And honestly, I want to make it more of a thing. I want to build this community. I want more people to have the healing power of the cold. The cold is so good. So I'm going to we'll put a link in the show notes if you want to join in the chat and join in. Uh, I'll let you know when our next cold plunge is and you can join in. I also, okay, I went, I went really hard on the cold plunges. I put a cold plunge pool on my patio and now I use it several times a week. And I also uh, got to take a Wim Hof workshop in Vancouver with David Gu. Uh, I had a friend who had a chronic health condition and wanted to learn more about breathwork and how it could help her heal and feel better. And I got to tell you, the day was amazing. I'll also link to David Gu because he's fantastic. Um, and that just like, I got to learn about the science behind it and it's made me even more committed to the breathwork and the cold practice. So if you haven't yet checked out Wim Hof, highly recommend it. Again, I'm going to put a link to the, in the show notes to the breathwork that I do, to David Gu, um, really awesome. One of the ahas I just want to share from that day that I did, everybody at the end of the day had to do a two minute ice bath and at the end of it, we all had to share how we felt. And let's just say first, uh, how awesome that everyone actually accomplished it. Incredible. And second, um, while some people, they hyperventilated or felt stressed through the process, for me, I described it as euphoric and joyful and peaceful. And what David told me, our instructor, David said, that is a really common response from busy moms, that it's the only few minutes of peace that we get in a day is being in a cold plunge pool is when no one, no one comes to us and it feels so good. And that's just exactly how I would describe it for me. The cold is calming. It soothes my anxiety, my monkey mind. It brings me right to the here and the now. So anyways, I hope maybe I pe- hopefully I peer pressured you enough to give it a try. I'll probably do an episode at some point where I talk about the cold. Um, some of those episodes with the detail, we talk about it as well. But for now, I just want to say explore it as you wish. And I can't remember recommend it enough, whether it's turning your shower on at the last 10 seconds to cold, it'll feel so good. Or if you're in Vancouver, joining me for an ocean swim. And if you're listening this summer, this is the perfect time to start because it's so much easier to gradually ease into it. Like when you're already hot get in some cold water, have a cold shower after a workout and on cold. It's going to feel so good. And if you're listening in winter, (laughs) I believe in you. You are brave enough. If I can do it, you can too. Okay. Well, I thought this was going to be like a 10 minute episode, but it turns out that a lot has happened. And I really wanted to share with you the real, the raw journey and the lessons in this that I hope that you can hear and take away for yourself. So that's me. That's what I've been up to in the last year. It has been a lot. And I take strength and I hope you can too. And knowing that as hard as it's been, as hard as it in some ways still is, that I believe that I'm a way better leader and person and human coach, podcaster, friend, community member, and self than I was a year ago. And I hope that you feel the same way as well for yourself, that the hard times have made you stronger and a better person. And if they haven't yet, then trust that there's some opportunity for growth and healing in there for you to move through it. Um, you know, what doesn't, what doesn't kill us hopefully can make us stronger. And I believe that that's possible for you too. I know that there's been a lot of pain the last couple of years for myself. I feel like I've, for lack of a better way of phrasing this, like exfoliated some of the crusty parts of me that needed to be shed. I hope that you can do the same thing for yourself and that you can show up for this next season, a little lighter, deeper, rounder, and more grounded. Man, I'm just, I feel really grateful to be here. I love, love being a part of this podcast. I'm so grateful to you for being here. Thank you so much for listening. It is my hope, it's my intention, it's my plan to keep going and to take all these lessons, all these things that I talked about and to continue to integrate them into my life, into my work with my clients and and into this show. So 
There's a lot of excitement as I share this, but we are officially relaunching Golden Girls Podcast. You're going to see more episodes coming out in the next few weeks and then at least once a week until we need another break, which, you know, that's going to happen. Um, But in the meantime, check out the latest episodes of Golden Girls Podcast. There's a whole lot coming your way. Thank you for being here. If you have a friend that needs to hear this, please share this with them and make sure you hit subscribe so you find out about all the new episodes coming out. I'm super excited. The next couple episodes, we've got amazing guests. As I mentioned, we've got Aditya Jay Kumar uh, talking about breathwork and ancient healing for the modern world. I uh, have an episode, two of them actually, with Yuri Fulmer, uh, all about venture capitalism and private equity for women. Awesome episodes. Um, and also talking about authentic leadership with best selling author and friend Amber Sweener, and so much more. So stay tuned. Big love to you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Thanks for listening. And thank you for staying open. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. If something spoke to you, send me a message by sharing this episode and tagging me on social media. If you know someone who would love to hear this episode, please share it with them too. Because I love surprises, make sure you subscribe to the Golden Girls podcast today. It's the only way to find out about bonus surprise episodes and make sure you don't miss a single beat on your golden journey. Thanks again for listening and I will talk to you in the next episode of the Golden Girls Podcast.